meow meow. Like I was saying hello too much. Of course, and I just said it again. It just like defeats the entire purpose, but. So, oh, I had thoughts planned. Same, not loud. Um, so the main evaluation of a study, well, conflictual thing that I'm running into, is like, whenever I have a negative thought, analyzing it and then being able to categorize it as, oh, it's because of this social anxiety or this thing stemming from the whole dietary plan. And it's like, that could be complete self-bias, but it'll be things like, um, and things that other people also experience. If I really don't want to be around people, or I hate people, or it's hard to talk to them and I don't really like them, and then self-spiraling thoughts like, oh, I can't do this, or life is very hard, or oh, I don't know. And these are all kind of things that are like, um, going away from living, you know, away from wanting life towards negative future perception. And that's kind of the cool things about humans, that we can perceive the future, like, we can think of it at all, it's really cool. And so then we're able to think that, because it's called, like, generalizing, like, you take that moment and you generalize it to be your entire freaking life, like, oh, since it's happening right now, it will happen forever. And also the social exclusion can just totally be a part of, you know, withdrawal of, um, away from reproduction towards the opposite of reproduction. I mean, that one just makes a lot of sense. And also, when it comes to kind of analyzing your thoughts, um, whenever things get, like, dark and stuff, it's, it's really easy to be consumed by them and think that they're horrible because, you know, they're not super explained and people kind of say it's your fault and why are you depressed and stop doing that. Just be happy instead. But there's things that need to be kind of analyzed. And once you take those thoughts, and I know it's hard, but for, I would say write them down. Um, but I know not everybody likes to write. It really helps, though. It really does. Like, okay, so you do this thing, like, you write about a chair, or you write about some inanimate object, and it helps you figure out how you're feeling. Like, if the chair catches on fire, then you're kind of upset, or if the chair has a baby sitting in it, then maybe you're thinking about family. But you write about a chair for, like, five minutes, and at first you might be just like, this is bullshit. Why am I writing about a chair? And then eventually it kind of flows out of you, like you start to access the layers to yourself and you get to know yourself. And I only say that because this is the way that I get to know myself is through writing. I'm sure there's tons of other ways. There's even, you know, writing music or creating art or drawing or I mean, even math works for you. Like if you do three plus three equals seven and you're having enough day or the more complex math you can do, the better day or... I don't know, I don't know the math. I like math. It's fun whenever it works out, but it's not something that I would ever be able to create a new formula for. Like, I can use the current ones and figure stuff out that way, but I'm, I don't understand it enough to create within it. But other people do. That's really cool. And I kind of wanted to explain another um, kind of mental predisposition I have for OCD. And I think OCD is different for some people. I just haven't researched it enough. But the obsessive-compulsive disorder side of it. I have the, um, the rumination, which is, like, um, repetitive. Especially whenever I was little, I would repeat a word. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't stop repeating it. It would drive me mad. And then I had this thing where, okay, so you know how you're learning how to type on the keyboard, and they put there's an N on my screen. <laughs> One day I really want to create um, for developers that do the whole like finger touching or like, where you can do blowing on things, and it works on like games where you can unhighlight everything and just not that people highlight that often. You know, this was way cooler until I said it out loud. But whenever you're learning the keyboard and they put like the sheet over it and you're really supposed to learn it. Well, I was having a problem with that, you know, I just, I wasn't progressing as fast as the other kids. So re like every single word that somebody would say, I would type it out in my head, like, um, what's going on, W-H-A-T-E-S, apostrophe is going on. And I would learn to type as fast as people were speaking, but I would have to type out every single word that someone said. And it would keep me up at night, like, because I would have thoughts. And then eventually, you know, there wouldn't be a separation between people saying things and my own thoughts because it would all just kind of be happening in my head, so I would, with my own thoughts, type out words. That's, that's obsessive, <laughs> and then, um, uh, I think I've done something else obsessive, but the, that was the hardest part, is a lot of repeating, and it took a, it took a lot of learning of self-control, um, okay, I'll just, I'll just go and tell you, this one's kind of dark, but, I would do this thing where if, because I was so sick of, of thinking, you know what, this, this, this is a little different. 
a short novel. Okay, so I would, I would, I would be sick of thinking. Because thinking would keep me up at night. And I was a unique little child and I just wanted to be normal. And so I started trying to like replace my thoughts with those of like celebrities and shows that I would watch. I would, like there was like Gilmore Girls was the main one that I watched. Yeah, there's plenty of talking there to uh, fuel off of. And so I would kind of almost become that person, like restrict my own thoughts to being theirs. Like only saying what they said, not thinking a lot. And it involved a lot of self-control. Like I would do like, um, you know that rubber band that you like flick yourself there? You're not really, really punishing yourself, but you kind of are like teach yourself not to. So it took a lot of a, a level of self-control. And I don't really know the healthy way to do it, to kind of get over those things, but they, they really get in you. And all these mental disorders, I don't know why, I, I understand them. And schizophrenia, like the whole voices thing, like I hadn't really had voices until the other night. And then after having the, like the fast food, and then hearing those voices, it was it was really like a radio. It was like they were speaking, and I couldn't talk to them, and I would have like my regular thoughts and try to listen to them, but they were just like thoughts with my own sound. Like I knew it was my voice, just said in weird ways and talking about kind of normal everyday things. But you know, it was that was I, that definitely is like a why is that happening type of thing. Um, I don't really have an explanation for that one. I think there are just so many layers to the human mind, honestly, and. There's so many different, like if you saw Inside Out, like anger and lust, like, not lust, anger and like disgust and, you know, there's just parts of us. And I wonder, and like, you know, whenever you dream, there's different parts of you and you can imagine up new people. And so I wonder if it's, because I was, I was about to fall asleep, you know, I was lying in bed. So I wonder if it was almost like dreaming while awake type of, and that was just so interesting. I don't even know yet. It was, it was terrifying then, but now it's interesting, which is the cool thing about being able to analyze all of it. And so I wonder if like, all these mental disorders, these things that happen in our, you know, so in our heads and crazy, how explainable they are. And it seems like there's already three of them that I feel I could almost have, you know, like the ACD, ugh, OCD and the ADHD and then schizophrenia. Like I say schizophrenia, schizophrenia so lightliness is a like, huge thing, but I also have had these huge problems with like remembering a memory. And I just, I know that our family is so carbon tolerant and I've been eating them. And these things just got better whenever I was off of carbs. And, you know, I'm also gluten intolerant and I'm not like diagnosed, but I took like tests and stuff and figured out that I am. And it's just so interesting how these things can mess with our minds and create these whole new things. And I find that it's all really fascinating and yeah. And that's all I have. Um, I'm getting better at eating the same thing every single day. At first it was like, why doesn't this feel good or taste good again? And I'm like, Wait, this is the first day. It's okay, like the second day. It's still new. Like I'm, I'm thinking that I'll get the benefits of having the repeated thing over and over on the first day. It's I'm getting like way ahead of myself. Um, I'm trying to. I'm debating if I should eat the like lunch part raw because apparently raw feels different. I'm like really afraid of skewing data just by the littlest things, like having one more cup of tea or just baking it instead of eating it raw. It's. It's really frustrating, but I want to. I want to try to keep it as streamlined as possible. So I'll decide by like tomorrow. I'll probably like eat. I, what I've been doing is just like eating the stock part raw and then baking the rest of it. You know, getting a little bit of raw factor in there. <sighs> it's so complicated because I'm making it complicated. That's exactly what it is. There's a little bird. Oh my god, it's so cute. Wait, let me see. Oh, the bird. oh it's. Oh, do you see it? It's kind of. It's like hiding behind the trees. You probably just see leaves, or maybe you see the bird. It's really cute. Oh, it's like saying hi. Okay, now, now the bird is boring. Sorry about that. Okay, bye.